I'm super excited to be here to share about what we are doing in the AI domain and trying to see how AI can help us make maps. This is an amazing community. We love to be here and to, to get feedback and to look for opportunities to collaborate. So at Facebook, our mission is to make the world more open and connected. Today, we already use maps in many locations, which is indispensable to our mission. We use it in pages, events, check-ins, as well as standalone apps such as Instagram and Messenger. High quality maps have proven very valuable to our users. In connection with our mission, we love that OpenStreetMap is the largest open map community and with more than two million contributors. We already use OSM in some of our uh, uh, experiences. For example, in this case, it's live video map. We, use, we build on top of OSM, and we also use that in display for certain countries. However, as we know, the quality of OSM varies country by country. We will perform the quantitative evaluation of road coverage of OSM, and the result shows that, not surprisingly, for developed countries, we have a good coverage. In this graph, it's showing in light red. If it's, if it's dark red, it means poor coverage. I think in developed countries, it's probably because we have donations from you know, government and, uh, and other companies, but also uh, frequent road development challenges map update. In developing countries, though, it varies a lot. For example, we've studied in Egypt, in that case, many of those locations, the OpenStreetMap road coverage is significantly lower than other sources. And we estimate that at the current rate of contribution in Egypt, it will take us a long time to, to get it up to the good core coverage that we want. And also with our internet.org initiative that intends to connect everyone on this planet, we are also talking about lots of areas that have never been on any, on any map before. Facing all these challenges, we are thinking about how can we make map editing simpler and faster. In this talk, I'm going to share some of our research using AI and computer vision and see how can we help um, to help people in mapping. So there's recent breakthrough in AI called deep learning. How many of you have heard about this term before? Yeah, it's almost everyone. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with this technology, it's essentially artificial neural nets with multiple layers. We know about these nets a long time ago. Uh, Professor Yuan Lokun, who is now a director at AI, at our AI lab, proposed deep neural nets more than 20 years ago almost. But it wasn't until recently have we been able to train these nets successfully with unprecedented amount of data and modern GPU. Now, these computer vision technologies built on top of deep learning can do incredibly well, often better than humans on the same task. For example, it can recognize images with thousands of categories, including hundreds of dog species that I've never heard of. Another thing that we are really excited about is higher resolution satellite imagery. The US government has lifted the ban on high resolution imagery for civilian use two years ago and we are partnering with Digital Globe to use the highest resolution imagery possible and see how AI can use those images to help us in mapping. To give you some idea about how deep learning can make a difference, this is being road detect API that was integrated into JOSM more than five years ago. I haven't tried this API myself, but Alistair wrote this online review that's uh, really great. Um, I just put this image here. Basically, this API is goal is to give a start and end point, and it tries to detect the main road connecting those points, as well as branches alongside the road. You can see from this image, it does an okay job in detecting the main road, but not so good in detecting those branches. This was published before the first deep learning paper, so I assume it wasn't using deep learning. In comparison, this is a dissertation from Vladimir three years ago with an open source implementation on how we can use deep learning to detect roads using satellite imagery. You can see the quality is amazing. At this level of quality, we can already extract roads automatically from satellite imagery. Same thing applies to buildings, and you can see the quality is equally good. This is the same model on the same set of data, and then we can detect buildings as well. 
However, when we move to developing countries, which we care a lot, and is where the OSM quality lags behind, you can see the significant challenge. In this image from Digital Globe, on the left-hand side is a city in Egypt. On the top right is a village in India, and on the lower right is an area in Rwanda. In these developing countries, majority of the roads are not paved, and they vary a lot, even country by country, in terms of color, width, and texture as well as the surroundings that are crucial for computer vision to decide where the roads are. We actually asked many expert right mappers on these kind of terrains and asked them to see where the roads are, and even they couldn't agree on where the roads are in many cases. And just to give you an example, for example, if when you use the model that was in Volodymyr's dissertation, trained using US data, and we just apply it directly to, to, us, uh, to an area in Thailand, this is what we get. Basically, the model can recognize why divided paved roads is also common in the US, but for those residential roads, it did a very poor job because the machine has never seen any roads of those roads before in the training data. So a simple improvement you can do is just to develop better training data for a local area, and you can see that it already greatly improves uh, the detection accuracy. In addition to training data, we also tried a lot of improvements to help us uh, make a better prediction on the roads. This is one of them. On the left, it was the original model proposed in Volodymyr's dissertation, which is a neural net with three to five layers. In this case, I believe we used only three. On the right-hand side is much deeper neural net with 16 layers, and you can see it does a much better job compared to the old model. With all these improvements, we are already doing an incredible job on detecting roads. This is our final results on one area. In, in Thailand, and you can see the road detection is really good quality. And this is another area in Egypt. This is equally well. And this area is pretty interesting that there's no, absolutely no road that's paved. So basically the machine learned to detect roads from just like the buildings and farmlands surrounding those roads, which is extremely difficult to do if you're using traditional machine learning techniques. So after all this road detection, it remains a big problem because the road we have from those predictions are just a raw raster image at grayscale, while the brightness indicates whether indicates the confidence of whether a pixel is a road or not. The task remains to convert all this into vector data before we can show it on maps. So in the next set of slides, I'll show our post-processing techniques on doing this job. So this is our raw prediction from one area in Thailand. Our first step is to apply a really high threshold to avoid false positive and to extract a center line. In this case, you can see the roads are kind of fragmented because not every section of a road has the same confidence. And we want to apply a very high confidence to begin with to avoid false positives. Then we can allow those roads to sort of grow and connect by going through low confidence regions. And this gives us much better quality than to compared to starting with very low confidence to begin with. So after this connection stage, the next step is to make sure there is no duplicate with respect to existing OSM roads. So in this case, it's kind of uh, subtle. There's only one road that already exists in OSM in this area, which is the one from left to uh, up to, to, to the top, it goes like this. And you can see it's a slightly different shape uh, compared to the one we generate. We definitely make sure we don't duplicate our roads. And also we take care of all the connections to the roads we generate to make sure we don't miss any connections. So this is a merge step, and the final step is just trimming. There are areas we detect sections of roads, but not necessarily fully connected to the main road network because of, say, dense vegetation, uh, like building shadows. Those are very difficult for machine learning to get it right. But we want to make sure we are conservative and don't leave any disconnected section of roads on the map. So we just prune all those. After all this, then we convert this vector data into OSM XML format, and we can upload them in JOSM in ID tool before we submit, before we actually, actually we have a group of mappers, terrific mappers, to help us verify every single road we generate, ensuring that it's um, compliant with OSM quality before we do submission. And also we modify the tool to highlight those new roads in green to make sure we definitely check every single road we generate. And you can already see here that's the gray road we have on this uh, area is the one I was talking about with merging. 
That's the only role that we had before we went in and made all these edits. So now you may ask, okay, that's great about the road geometry, what about road metadata, which is also very significant and very challenging. So here's our approach to it. For road type, we try to influence, try to infer from satellite imagery and topology. From satellite imagery, we can detect whether a road is paved or not, and its width and other information. And then topology can tell us, oh, is this like a village because of a high density of roads? And this, is also, or is this a long road connecting two remote villages? Or maybe this is something in the farmland because it's just like uh, and like dead end going to nowhere. And now we can determine the road types based on the local mapping convention. For road names, we are experiencing, um, experimenting with cross-sourcing technologies. If you are in Thailand, this might be a screen you will see. We ask you to confirm a road is indeed named 108. Design navigation attributes, we've seen lots of talks on this. This is one from Brian this morning. We can use GPS probe data to try to infer, for example, whether a road is one way, or if there's any term restriction, and et cetera. There are many published results on this topic. So to give you an example before and after, this is an area we did in Egypt. And in this area, our mappers with machine-generated roads, it took him only a couple of minutes to verify all the roads before submission versus ours if we had to generate everything manually from scratch. And we are continuously improving our algorithm for better quality and more efficiency for our mappers to finish the final verification step. This is another change set we have in Egypt with lots of machine-generated roads. So in conclusion, we're really excited, excited to be here in collaboration with OpenStreetMap community. We can enable a greater transparency. We can have better product, localized product experiences. And also, we can facilitate the innovation at scale. At Facebook, we're researching the latest AI technologies combined with the highest resolution satellite imagery and trying to see how it can help us make map editing simpler and faster. We like to continuously learn from this amazing community and look for opportunities to collaborate. With that, I'd, happy, I'd be happy to take questions. And this is our contact information. Feel free to talk to us anytime. Thank you very much to attend my talk. Thanks very much for that. You did the road, ex the feature extraction based on the radiographic properties of the satellite images. Are you using, I mean, you've got users on the ground who are checking into food stands and things like that. Are you using the, uh, the uh, data generated by your users on the ground to confirm or enhance uh, some of the, these uh, road No, we are using satellite data alone okay. in this research work. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I have a question. When you do the road detection and all the other uh, feature extraction, do you actually contribute that information back to OSM in any way or form? Oh, we submit the roads after manual verification, and we, that's, that's what we do. And by the way, since this feature extraction come, came up twice, uh, for deep learning, that's benefit is that we don't have to do all those feature extraction manually because it's end-to-end -end training. You just supply training data with the model defined. Everything is sort of done automatically. Hi, did you run the feature extraction again, the mostly spectral version of the images or the RGB versions? Just RGB version. We've tried the, the multi spectrum, but you know, like uh, building and road they look the same. It's not that useful. It's good for farmlands, but not good for roads. I mean, do you aim at uh, releasing that data in a broader scope or the tools is open source or anything? Is there any way that the community can use that and uh, like against like Bing imagery or anything? Yeah, we are looking into that opportunities. I mean, we definitely love this open source community and we are thinking about ways to collaborate. Um, our algorithm runs on our own platform, so it's probably not that easy to release. But in terms of the data, we are looking for ways to share. So, yeah, maybe you can share the data even if you can't share the tools, right? I mean, if you shared the data for the whole region that you run it, that would be awesome. Yeah, thank you so much.
yeah, we've already done the country scale uh, mapping on this. So because it's embarrassingly parallel, uh, you know, computation in the like computer science term, you just like run it across the whole region with thousand GPUs, and we can get a country done in like a couple of weeks, at most, actually two weeks, but for Egypt, for example, and we've made significant contributions in that country. Yes. We use both, I think, and we use it based on like best user experiences we can have. Have you um, published any sort of papers or white papers about your modifications to the deep learning algorithm? Oh, we haven't. Will you? <laughs> I'd love to. I think we'll we find opportunities once we have uh, really like solid results. A digital globe, yeah. So deep learning usually requires a large training data set. So what's the set that you use to train the Egypt and the Thailand data? And how did you create the truth data for the training? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So we definitely, we have a group of uh, mappers as you're seeing in our picture. And they're great. We are just, just trying to put everything on machine map. So actually you can probably use that training data as well. Uh, we can talk more about it offline if you are interested. On the Facebook trying to map the world population, is it similarly linked to the, this deep learning project? It's a different group. They are using also deep learning techniques, um, but it's not exactly the same as I talked about. You mentioned that uh, the U.S. and Thailand were different. Do you have any sense of how many different models you're going to have to build to uh, kind of question. span that's, the spectrum? That's what we are looking into right now. Um, currently, we take a relatively conservative approach, trying to make sure we have the best quality, so we create, for example, one model per country, but we hope to consolidate. How much training data did you need to be able to accurately predict the roads? It varies. It depends on the like variety of the country. like. India is a really big country, you know, you probably need a lot of training data, but Egypt is really, really straightforward. There's only like two, three types of uh, like terrains or like things you see. And uh, our training data varies anywhere between like 100 kilometers square to say three, 500 kilometers square. Great question, we haven't tried that, but my feeling is that if the machine hasn't seen that uh, terrain before, it won't work. So um, it's more interesting to see if we can train a model with all sorts of different training data together and see if that works for everything. Uh, we are still working on that. Could you see OpenStreetMap data itself being used as a training set, or would there be sort of licensing issues in doing yeah, that? Yeah, it's not licensing, but it's more about uh, the alignment with satellite imagery, because this is really high precision data at this level of uh, 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 resolution, any slight misalignment could greatly affect the quality. So that's why we've been trying to create it ourselves rather than relying on any like, known good area for training. Great. Thank you so much.